Uh, yesterday uh, we have just taken one simple example uh, how to find out the unknown like uh, solutions of uh, voltage angle and power flow through transmission line and uh, losses in the system what is that power supplied by black bus was the computation expected in this problem i just over you the problem back this problem was discussed yesterday having three buses bus number 1 is black bus with a voltage 1.05 angle 0 pu and bus number 2 is load bus which at the right side of the presentation at the left of the presentation you have another load bus uh, which is bus number 3 with respect to megawatt and the megavolt ampere we have to mention and you have transmission lines data in the form of impedance and you are said the system base be taken as 100 so you have been asked to compute the solutions of voltage at the end of iteration 1 2 3 like that this problem is being used in a computer for seven iteration so we will look for only one iteration because our academic uh, need is only for one iteration manually therefore solution of voltage magnitude and phase angle etc transmission line losses power supplied whether a uh, flat bus we can uh, measure or compute using this particular gosler technique then for that we should just check the data given in the transmission mechanism of uh, those transmission lines is impedance or admittance it is impedance in this problem and uh, uh, the megawatt and megavolt ampere need to be converted to per unit that is the reason uh, base of the system value 100 is given so i should make use of base value and i should uh, transform them to per unit values which is being done in this problem like this so you have been given admittance means impedance converting them to admittance i'll get respectively the element between 1 and 2 element between 1 and 3 element between 2 and 3 respectively taken inverse of the data what is given in the problem because that is impedance but i am in need of admittance hence it is being done it is being shown in the first line of this slide hence it is the first work voltage is mentioned at the slack bus then at the load side you just watch which is a bus 2 megawatt megavolt ampere reactor which has to be divided by 100 to get its active power in pu reactive power in pu so which is all written in the particular author's page scheduled complex power at bus number 2 how do you you do it in the numerical solution in the numerical solution if i am go to the next slide will be very clear what is v2 of 1 V2 of one is the solution of voltage at the end of equation number one, which is you can see see my pointer which I am pointing P2 minus J2 two over V2 zero conjugate and the summation of products of admittance and voltage, admittance and voltage etc. This was a generalized expression for Gauss-Seidel load flow solution divided by Y2. Two, which is for bus two y two two y two two is not done by this author it is being done as some of the elements radiating from line two bus two to rest rest of the buses like that this p two q two i was presenting you in the in 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 the in earlier uh, discussion the should generation minus demand i should calculate so generation minus demand if i calculate at bus number two there is no generator in fact it is a load bus p q bus And PG is zero. Zero minus this megawatt turns to be negative. That is the reason you have at the footer of this particular representation at bus two, P is negative. Two fifty six point six divided by hundred was two point five double six. That is PD demand at bus two. What is generation at bus two? Zero. Zero minus two point five six was of minus two point five double six in the active power position. In the reactive power position, it is. 110.2 over 100, 1.102 mvr converts to pu. That is zero injection of reactive power, but there is a demand of 1.102 pu, which you can see here. 1.102 pu. Naturally, we have this particular minus changing its position when I take it to next slide. Similarly, at bus number three, this has to be divided by 100 and pg minus pd. QG minus QD, I should operate. Once I operate, you can see here, it is a term 
PG minus PD. The second term is QG minus QD. Can you see over here? Plus has come here. In the previous slide, it was minus here. This is because we have originally P minus JQ. This minus JQ will change its value minus to plus. Then this entire term, initial estimate of voltage, what we call it flat start. The flat start means the variable whose value I am trying to estimate has to be begun with the initial estimate on angle zero or one plus J zero like that. So they were used. Once I substitute all these values divided by Y22 term, I will be able to get this value of V2 of 1. Same as V3 of 1, we will get the value. Then this was the solution in the first part. Suppose you were likely to do further solutions, still the voltage solutions are within certain permission. Like it should be within this variation. Tolerance is given. Then how to work for that value? Then you have to check this every time. Once you obtain a value, is it close to that? How far away is that? You have to check. Till it comes to the convergence, you keep repeating the iteration. That time, by chance, you are interested to know how would this problem look if I take second pass of calculation. You would see here V2 of 2. In the place of V2 of 1, I have written V2 of 2. Same equation. Same entire equation is same. Only thing what you get changed is V2 0 conjugate. This was called initial estimate. It was one angle zero or one plus J zero. Now no more one angle zero. What I obtain, this becomes substitution in the position of V2 one conjugate. That is the change you should see. I am pointing the pointer here. This is the change one minus J zero V2 zero conjugate. Similarly, when I go for second iteration, it is not 1 minus J0, it is the value of voltage obtained in the previous iteration, conjugate of that, which is presented here. And rest all is just T. Wherever there is V3, V2, respectively changes have come. V1 is a slag bus voltage, it won't change. This is V3. V3 just obtained 1.0011 minus J 0 0.0353, which was originally in the first step, 1 plus J0, which I am changing by immediate best answer what we have obtained in the previous iteration. So this way, this revised values are being substituted and used to get best fit value for end of iteration 2. Likewise, bus 3 voltage at the end of iteration 2. I am sure when I work for this, look into this, P3 minus JQ3 over V3 1 conjugate instead of V3 0 conjugate it is V3 of 1, the output obtained in the previous iteration. I could point the pointer here, 1.011 minus J, 0.0353, whose conjugate I am using here, 1.011 plus J, 0.0353, whatever. Rest all you can see, V1 is as usual. Here you can see, it is the V2, V2, not V2, it is the value 0.98 V2 of 2. Can you see this? Not V2 of 1, V2 of 2. Previously obtained means V2 of 2 is readily available for you. 0.9816. What was the value of it in the V2 of 1? It was 0.9825 minus J0310 in the first iteration end. And second iteration end, it is 0.9816 minus 0.0520. This is being driven here. So this way, the voltage of 3, bus 3 is getting updated very faster. In that way, iteration by iteration when we perform, you are trying to um, make the solution best to fit as possible. So that subsequently the total convergence of the system will be faster and efficient in that way. So this is how iteratively the previous best fit values are being used to get best estimate of the current variable and it should, it should be continued till the convergence criteria is met. Okay. I move to the next one. Next step is, this process was, I was discussing in the earlier class, estimated up to a tolerance, 0.4005. This is the tolerance band expected, 0 0.00005. It's called as error permitted from successive iterations. It has been listed here. Suppose bus 2 at the end of iteration 3, what is the value? Bus 2 at the end of iteration 4, 5, 6, 7. 
at the end of seventh iteration solution is acceptable solution is accepted at the end of seventh iteration but for us no need to do about all seven or eight only one pass that's all so it is just to mention you how computer can do this work for our understanding so seven iterations were performed at seventh iteration solutions were accepted similarly for bus 3 seventh iteration come to be good with the requirement so once it is ready put the value which was expected what is v2 what is delta t can you see over here it is a magnitude of the bus voltage at the end of the conversion now i am not saying end of what iteration now i'll be pronouncing end of conversion suppose my problem is tick on to end of only one iteration i should take the value of v2 of one only i can go back and tell you what is the starting point for me this is the standing point for me and this is the standing point for me that's all convert it to polar tell what is v2 what is delta t convert this v3 of one to magnitude and angle and stop but for me i have an opportunity that this presentation is having number of successive iteration to convey you how numerical solutions work in a computer likewise my first output iteration 1 with the magnitude and angle magnitude and angle i should be presenting you this is the first thing what is the new thing you got in this the new thing what you got is what is that power applied by the slack bus in this problem there was no generator other than slack bus what is the active power delivered by that reactive power pumped by that we we want to calculate so this called as a complex power situation yes one yes one is nothing but what v1 i1 conjugate suppose i want to separate active and reactive power i should take yes one conjugate what is you can see here c1 minus jq1 it is nothing but conjugate of complex power at bus 1 which is nothing but separation of active and reactive power for this this term which is nothing but v1 conjugate i you have to stretch it what is i i is the current at bus 1 i take you back to the diagram and convince you once again what is the current injected here current injected here is say i1 i1 is i 1 to 2 plus i 1 to 3 how you get i 1 to i 1 to is v1 minus v2 into y 1 to that is the current moving along this what is the current flowing through this v1 minus v3 into y 1 3 if i add these two i will be getting grand sum i 1 using kcl that is being done here the work what is being done here is in the square bracket current moving towards bus 2 current moving towards bus 3 is taken as a sum and which is taken with the product of v1 conjugate this will naturally separate me active and reactive power so first term represent active power delivered by the slack bus j operated term represent reactive power delivered by the slack bus so you could see here it is 409.5 megawatt being injected what was the need actually the need is this much 138 megawatt at bus 3 256 megawatt at bus 2 add these two and check with the final what is the answer is a 409 409 9 sum of these two what is the differential value that differential value will be lost in this section 1 2 1 3 2 3 that is called active power loss i should measure it so that is what the measurement will work out similarly reactive power reactive power injected is 1. 89 pu or 189 mvar i have to add up reactive power demand at bus 2 bus 3 should be total reactive power then once i am able to do it some more activity this author has performed what is being done to find the complex power flows on transmission line what is the s12 complex power flowing from bus 1 to 2 so we have learned this how to write it first subject refer voltage both together refer current S12 is V1, I12 conjugate. Likewise, I have I12, I21 opposite to each other by one negative sign. If you can see here, what is I12? It is V1 minus V2 into elemental admittance. If I take this difference and multiply, I'll be getting current I12. Can you see over here? Opposite to which is I21. One negative of this one minus 1.9 plus J point. Can you see over here this line? 
which I am pointing over here with the cursor, and the one which I am pointing over here with the cursor. Likewise, I one two, I two one, I one three, I three one, I two three, I three two. This is what I am able to do from the first principle. Once I am able to do it, look into this. How it is being done? But I am very, I am very sure. Look into me. What the solution this page is containing is solution of voltage at the end of seventh iteration. So only what is my need in the examination? By chance, such a problem is posed to me after the one iteration. Whatever the value of voltage one, voltage two, three, four, I get those only I should use. But no doubt, this is a computer-generated answer where seventh iteration data is there. Refer to we have complete convergence that we call it complete convergence. So therefore, we will not worry about uh, those things, but we should worry about the terminology what is being referred. V1, I want to, and substituting as usual. Then I will find what is the complex power flowing from bus one to bus two via transmission line is 199.5 megawatts and 84 mvr. Similarly, what is the reverse flow? One to two is the flow. What is the reverse flow? Exactly, I use the same first principle. I rewrite. When I rewrite it, why I am writing it? You must be knowing. If I know yes one two, if I know yes two one, if I add these two, it it results me zero. It means that line is not consuming any power. It's called as a lossless line. If it is a lossless line, yes one two and yes two one, when I add. It result me zero. I'm sure it is not going to result zero. We can watch here. One side it is 199.5, other side is 191. It won't be zero. There is nearly eight megawatt difference. That eight megawatt nearly difference is what transmission line active power loss along one to two element. Similarly, reactive power loss. This I want to quantify. Similarly, yes, one three, V one, I one three conjugate. If I'm able to do it. What is yes three one? Yes three one. You may ask me, can I write yes one three equal to minus yes three one? You cannot write. If you want to write like a current, I one two I two one by one negative. Can I write yes one three yes three one by negative? If you write it, if you accept it, that's called lossless line. Because when I add yes one three yes three one, when there is an opposite sign mentioned, it goes to zero. What it indicates to you? Lossless line. Is it really so in the problem? Definitely no. Therefore, we have to numerically calculate what is S13, what is S31, respectively other. I mean, so once you work it out, you are able to term out what is the total loss. Loss in section one two, loss in section one three, loss in section two three. Those S L one two, S L one three, S L two three. If you add and take the System load 256 and 138. It must be equal to 409.5. I mean to say, slack bus pumping should be equal to loss plus load. Active loss plus load reactive. This is how a solution of Gauss Fresnel problem should take place. So in the yesterday's interaction, this was a stop point. What we could do. So just brush it up so that it will be very necessary for you all. You will be faster with me to pick the next problem. Now, can you view this problem? What is the change in this problem? Can anybody make it out? There is a generator mentioned. Earlier problems, what we were watching and interacting were only with the load bus. It was very comfortable for us. Now you have one reference bus. Which is bus number one, and we have at bus two load, and at bus three we have generator. Generator is scheduled at 1.04 PU voltage and its capacity of 200 megawatt. It means P and V are mentioned. P and Q are mentioned at bus two, and at slack bus V and delta is mentioned. Transmission lines are given in the form of impedance. Now what I should do now? If I view it without reading much of the problem, it is a problem for me through Gauss Fresnel, obtain load flow solution, find out the transmission line losses, and estimate the power supplied by the slack bus. If I take it as my target without having much reading on the problem, and I must check the problem. Yes, 
देर आर मेगावॉट मेगावॉट एम्पेयर आर मेन्शन यस आई हैव टू कन्वर्ट देम टू पर यूनिट आई शुड चेक फॉर बेस सिस्टम इट कॉल्ड हंड्रेड इज द बेस या इट इज गिवन देन आई शुड चेक डाटा इज इन इंपेडेंस आर एडमिटेंस इट इज इन इंपेडेंस माय इमीडिएट स्टेप इज टू कन्वर्ट देम टू एडमिटेंस विदाउट फेल अदरवाइज आई मे गो रॉन्ग आई माइट हैव सॉल्व अ प्रॉब्लम दिस इज नॉट इंटेंडेड सो देयरफॉर दैट इज द अटेंशन आई मस्ट पे यस इट इज बीइंग डन देन आई मस्ट चेक अनदर थिंग एट बस नंबर 3 वेयर देयर इज अ जनरेटर what is being given p and v is given what are unknown to you there q and delta r were unknown you have to calculate q reactive power injected by that and delta sustained by that we have to calculate as well as at the end of the solution v3 of 1 what i obtain i should throw out magnitude of this i should fix it as 1.04 that is the technique we learned modification of gauss seidel technique for pv versus me voltage solution must be obtained after having q limit verification successfully worked out and obtain the voltage reject the magnitude retain the angle obtained that was the logic so we will see how it can be done for that qi r plus 1 reactive power injection ability of the synchronous generator has to be checked to check it i must have limit what are the limit the limit of q g min q g max limit of generator minimum ability maximum ability are they being given here they are not being given so therefore q min q max for this generator we are not given it is assumed that whatever the value i get i will be using in the problem by chance if you have been given q g min q g max recall back the flow chart in the flow chart is this the pq bus yes calculation for the front and direct is this the pv bus yes calculate qi first is the qi is greater than min less than max i have to check there for that boundaries are required for me constraints are required for me so they are not given they are not given means what i obtain is a numerical content i should be using so this is how you have to decide yourself if the data is not given i should proceed with it data is given i should verify and go next that's what we have to be careful okay next at this particular megawatt 200 again it is 200 divided by 10 2 pu so what about the bus number 2 bus number 2 400 megawatt 250 mA here if i divide it by 100 i will getting 4 pu active and 2.5 pu reactive power so i am sure what is p2 situation q2 situation pg minus pd no generation only demand it becomes minus 4 and this this becomes plus 2.5 when i take this example you can see here plus 2.5 minus 4 plus 2.5 we'll see we'll come back not issue it means i should be able to get per unit representation of megawatt load megawatt ampere reactive and i should be able to write pg minus pd qg minus qd respectively and for this bus number 3 pg is given qg is not given qg i have to calculate because i have to use the equation v3 of 1 by chance if i pronounce it v3 of 1 is equal to 1 by y33 inside a square bracket p3 minus jq3 over v30 conjugate minus y31 v1 minus y32 v2 of 1 Like that, I have to use it. If I want to use them, where are P2, Q2 for you? It means P3, Q3 for you. P3 is over here. Divide by 100. If I make it become two, what is Q3 for you? Unless you calculate, you cannot solve it. That is the change in workout of PV bus related problem of Gauss Seidel. Hope you got the gist of the problem. When I encounter bus number three, it is not direct solution. I have to solve for reactive power first, and I should go far. okay i just move from this data which is impedance i have to convert to admittance from this megawatt and megawatt ampere i have to convert it to per unit then i move to next slide as usual we have flat start because this bus 2 is load bus which is not given any voltage whose solution my requirement bus 3 is the generator whose voltage is scheduled at 1.04 so 
flat start is my necessary you can see here bus 1 is reference bus as i mentioned starting from the initial estimate of v20 equal to 1.0 plus j0 this is called as a flat start one angle j0 or one angle zero can you watch this term v30 v30 is what 1.04 plus j0 why it is used 1.04 here why not one angle zero here it is generator bus by chance if i use this value instead of 1.04 1 only i'll be getting a numerical solution and at the end of the solution i am going to reject the magnitude and force it to 1.04 hence you recall my interaction i advise if it is a pv bus it is advisable to use scheduled voltage as its initial estimate it will reduce the computational burden and accurate solution for faster in your approach rather than taking one more iteration iterations can be lesser in count in that regard usually for a generator bus scheduled voltage is forced as initial guess you might ask me what will happen if i take initial guess as one angle zero of course no problem you will find a small influence on angle it won't be that great influence a minor influence you will find on the angle side hence the author will check are you intelligent to, enough to use initial estimate 1.04 none they may not check your accuracy this is the check point for your observation if you have used 1.1 1 plus j0 this is the first principle you have used you need a correction that's all else in the second iteration third iteration your answer must be matching my answer but to check whether you are attentive or not this is being the check point okay so when it is a pv bus it is advisable to use its scheduled voltage as its initial point now it comes to me what is v2 of 1 for me what is v2 bus voltage of a load bus i go to previous slide what is bus 2 for you load bus load bus calculation should go as usual i am going here p2 minus j q2 what is p2 pg minus pd pg is 0 pd is 4 4 4 pu it becomes 0 minus 4 minus 4 minus qg minus qd qg means generation of reactive power here there is no generator zero hence it is only reactive power 2.5 pu which comes out minus of minus 2.5 as plus 2.5 divided by what is v20 positive initial estimate of the variable i am checking here this is 1 plus j0 minus comes out here doesn't make any difference next this you recall back i was speaking in yesterday's class also lower case y12 nothing but elemental data of transmission element when i use elemental data it comes to be plus 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 wherever if i use capital notation of y12 i'll be using it from y bus when i use y bus this plus has to come here if i represent minus of capital y12 it means what originally in the y bus of diagonals are negative negative and additional negative minus capital y12 make it positive in that way book to book a small difference in notation you will get but you must be able to crack i'll tell you in short elemental data if you use plus you should use admittance bus content you use here minus you should use this is a trick you remember or this is what you should know when you refer textbook to textbook from the observation okay it is what is the right hand side quantity it is the connectivity from bus to where all it is connected 2 to 1 y to 1 where in superscript but 2 to 3 it is v3 zero bus 3 i haven't touched i am yet at bus 2 and it becomes v3 zero only okay so we, what is v3 zero for you the scheduled voltage at bus number 2 so which i mentioned here when i divide entire term by y22 what is y22 for you here y22 is sum of the admittance of y12 and y23 this is being done directly being written y12 y23 instead of capital y22 they wrote it in bit and add it then take this product complete this represent 
a particular solution of load voltage at bus number 2 as 1.9746 minus j.042307 it is in rectangular form what is requested for us you should mention this is equivalent with please note me whatever the complex values you are getting you must mention particularly voltages you must mention them in polar as well because you require magnitude of the polar and angle of it as a delta that is your need whether you whether you know or not you please mention that is the need of the problem itself therefore this is my advice you must mention complex voltages both in polar and rectangular so this is the solution at the iteration number 1 for bus number 2 what about bus number 3 now i go back what is bus 3 for you by mistake also don't go like a bus 2 for bus 3 here this problem has to be treated differently because it is generator bus in this position v3 schedule is given p v are given q and delta are our unknown to be found out using gauss method then it comes to bus 3 is a regulated bus that means voltage controlled bus voltage magnitude and real power are specified then reactive power calculation is mandated what is it exactly given here this is actually minus imaginary i minus imaginary part of what is this complex power here if i make it first principle suppose you, you all of you please concentrate over here how it can be done very easily at bus 3 what is the complex power in the cell it is v3 i3 conjugate that's all what is the complex power injected by the any identity it need not be generator what is the complex power injection at bus 3 it is bus voltage and bus current what is the current here i3 what is the voltage v3 it is v3 i3 conjugate what is i3 for you i3 is i rushing from 3 towards 1 i rushing out from 3 towards 2 so it is i3 1 plus i3 2 you find no nothing but i3 for me so this is how i3 to 1 i3 to 2 with this v3 i can mix up to get the total complex power injected by this of which it is my interest only reactive part the first part will be active power the second part is reactive power that is my interest like in the previous problem what is the complex power injected by the slack bus you worked out s1 equal to v1 i1 conjugate and you took a conjugate of the entire work to separate them as real and reactive the same thing i should do here when i do the same thing here s3 conjugate s3 is the complex power s3 conjugate i do it real term reactive term second term is naturally minus that what is being shown here q3 of 1 at first iteration reactive power injection reactive power calculated at generator bus 3 is minus imaginary part of can you see over here just don't look anything here v3 here yes yeah. you required i3 i3 conjugate whose conjugate hence it becomes voltage conjugate current direct v3 conjugate i3 where is i3 i3 is in this term what is i3 for you i 3 to 1 can you make out in the square bracket here i next make a bracket here square bracket and last square bracket what is this v3 zero what is this v1 just imagine there is a minus here v1 v3 minus v1 v3 minus v1 y13 what it refers to v3 minus v1 y12 y y31 what it refers to current flowing along this v3 minus v1 into y13 or y31 it is the current rushing in this that's been shown here v3 v1 different into y13 y13 what is the other term v3 minus v2 of 1 why it is v2 of 1 v2 of 1 is the latest value of v3 is available with you so v3 zero which you have to find out initial guess is there which is 1.04 minus the updated value of v2 into y23 so this bracket if you split 
you will get the current i3 in two part one part is bus 3 to 1 another part is bus 3 to 2 so together it represent to bus current i3 so if i take a product with v3 conjugate what it represent complex power of which only second term j operated term is of my interest hence this when i split it will have both real and reactive it will have real and re reactive only reactive term you catch hold the remaining you leave off so in that regard when i take this particular split of calculation so i am i am very easy over here to convey you but when you do it a calculator it is not that easy i know the pain of that because in the complex mode you have to operate these terms which are put in the bracket put in the bracket you have to operate using calculator step by step simplify take product then you will have final answer inside this flower bracket i am marking over here a flower bracket opening flower bracket closing within this this is a complex rectangular pattern this will be in a rectangular pattern and of that rectangular pattern answer the first term is real term which is active power we leave this the second term is reactive power which is of your interest which you have to pick so that is being taken as 1.16 in fact it is minus 1.16 there is a minus outside it made it as plus 1.0 no matter plus comes out or minus comes out it is your requirement reactive power computed at bus b because it is a generator bus you have to do using this expression which is minus imaginary part of complex power conjugate at that bus it may be bus number 2 generator you should work for that bus number 3 the generator if you work for that likewise this simple expression need to be worked out carefully and obtain only the j operated term as your need it is 1.16 now come to the conclusion for the generator bus 3 you have been given v3 1.04 You have been given P3. What is the P3 given to you? I go back and check. What is given to you? 200 megawatt. Nothing but 2 PU is your value. P3 is given. Q3 you obtain. You obtain Q3. Then use these two in the combination. Can you see over in the footer? There is a marker. I am pointing with the mouse. V3 computer. Can you see a small change in notation? V P3 one. Computed power of bus three. It need not be C three. It is V three enough. But author has specifically made it V C three. Computed power at bus three one at the end of equation one is same equation P three two P U minus J Q three. Now I will ask you what is this first term P G minus P D. PG minus PD. So there is a generation, 200 megawatt, 2 PU, no demand. 2 minus 0, this 2. Are you able to make this plus 2 here? When there is a generator, the first term becomes plus. When there is a load, I just watch my pointer here. It is minus because there is no generation, only demand. It becomes minus here. That is the change you have to notice here. Then, as usual, minus J Q3. What is Q3? QG minus QD minus inside a bracket. Generation. How much the generation? 1.16 minus demand. What is the demand? No demand. No 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 load reactive here. Hence it is what is being injected is the actual reactive power, which is considered as minus outside 1.16. So you did it. Hope you understood this calculation. This is the speciality and additional work one should do if you encounter generator buses in. Gauss Seidel technique. Therefore, I must tell you this P calculation, P cal two calculation has to be reviewed properly when we work with the PV buses. Rest of the work there is no change. So you can see over here from this calculation P three minus J Q three over V three zero conjugate. What is V three zero conjugate for you? Initial estimate nothing but you are assumed. Force value of 1.04. This is the conjugate of that minus J0. Doesn't make any difference. And the connectivity from that bus three. 
plus 3 is connected with bus 1. You will have y13 v1. Here plus is there because the author has referred elemental admittance. Hence it is plus y13. If I use y bus content capital y13, no doubt this should be minus capital y13 at that time. Okay. No matter how it is being done, you will understand. So y13 v1 slash bus voltage plus y23 v2 of 1. Why this is v2 of 1? Why not a v2 of 0? v2 of 1 is previously worked out here. The fit value is readily available here. Not the one angle 0. Hence, it must be referred here. By mistake, if you refer one angle 0, you will not get the significant change in the answer. But examiners are quite clever in this. They will check this substitution. If you substitute the one angle 0, they understand you don't know Gauss the technique itself. Answer will not vary that much. You can try, my friend. 0.97 and 1 doesn't make that difference over here. Still, it can be accepted. But your substitution makes a lot of difference. The conceptual thinking of Gauss Adel will get diluted. In that regard, you should be very careful when you go with the higher and higher bus level, lower bus levels, updated values only you need to utilize. That is the gist of GS substitution in iteration process. So, when I substitute V2 of 1, so V3 computed is readily with you. Now you are in a right position to see what is the real part of that? 1.03780. Imaginary part is minus J 0 0.005170. Now what is its actual force value? Actual force value should be at the end of the calculation 1.04. Angle is 0, but angle I have to calculate. How is it being done? Can you see over here? Can you see? Now I suggest you, don't simply put your additional thinking. This rectangular value convert to polar. When you convert to polar, what you will get? You will get a magnitude, you will get an angle. Am I right? Magnitude, you forget. Angle, you catch. That's all. That's being done here. They convert the square of the new force value Square of the imagine this is additional. I suggest very sincere suggestion to you. Convert this to polar. Reject the real term, nothing but magnitude. In that position, force it as 1.04. Angle, what you get? That you carry forward. That's been done here. So the value is 1.04 square minus 0.0. 0, 0.5170 square under the root is a magnitude real. It is being written here and it is shown. So, this is the computed value of complex rectangular form. But what I am suggesting you is instead of this, you convert it to polar magnitude, you reject, write magnitude as 1.04 and angle what you get, keep it angle as it is. That is the computed value of bus 3, nothing but generator voltage at the end of iteration number 1. You may require to calculate it to rectangular, please convert and do. It will be equal to this value. There is no doubt about it, it will be 1.039 only, if I do by other way which I said you. So, whether you follow this method or that method, it should be worked out. So, author is doing second iteration third iteration. So, we do not worry about it. So, our interest is to see when a PV bus is encountered, how my calculation pattern will change is what I wanted to focus. What is it being done? Now, look into this. At this time, I know V2 of 1, I know delta 2 of 1. I know V3 of 1, I know delta 2 of 1. And also, I know Q3 of 1. Reactive power ability of synchronous machine at bus number 3 also, I know. At this point, if I map myself, can I calculate complex power flow on transmission line? S12, S13, S23, like that. Yes, I can calculate like earlier problem. If I take a forward and reverse calculation of that complex power, take addition of those two, can I obtain transmission line losses in that? I am able to do it. If I know the total complex power injected by the flat bus, I can calculate S1 equal to V1 I1 conjugate. If I make a conjugate of that, S1 conjugate, real and reactive, I can separate. 
so this way i will be able to understand the one by one concept which we understood from the previous problem as a knowledge over this to make ourselves comfortable with the problem so no matter author has taken second iteration we'll just skip and observe by chance same process is continued can you see over here v2 up to same process but the substitutions are revised again at v3 calculation q3 has to be done here q3 is calculated and used in this likewise the author worked out several iterations in the computer at the end of the iteration by conversion at tolerance of so called point 0005 value given to the computer it converted at seventh pass of computation seven iterations have been exhausted in achieving this then the solutions were put in the for like this. so power delivered by slag uh, bus s1 power delivered by synchronous generator voltage level of load bus voltage level of generator can you see over v3 is again 1.04 which was given what is the angle this angle you computed actually you for a for a s3 you were put to calculate this only this was computed indirectly by calculating reactive power therefore 1.04 answer is known to you in the examination 1.04 is your final hit magnitude only angle you have to calculate by q q you know angle you got you got out of out of v3 calculation so 1.04 is given in the problem that is the answer you have to reach only angle is what its impact when i use 1.04 q when i calculate i'll be getting angle respectively so this is how we need to touch the problem very very carefully so then all the transmission angle answer which i was speaking to you you can look into this so the transmission line losses mean transmission power flow forward flow s12 reverse flow how do i do it s12 first term refer v v1 i12 conjugate refers to complex power flowing from 1 to 2 like this 1 to 2 2 to 1 1 to 3 3 to 1 2 to 3 3 to 2 and my friends we can do this in my power simulation software also and in one or other classes i will initiate power world software if you can utilize pcs or laptop in your house you can use that free resource power world software you can do such examples live on that if you could get me a chance when i go to next module before that in one session some of the examples of power world i will simulate in this computer or in my laptop i will show you the screen how exactly power flow is simulated using software packages i can show you and i can show you some reports also so th like that the calculation transmission line losses we need to find out like this similarly i have losses forward flow reverse flow can you see over here 199.5 megawatt is left from bus 1 what is reached here is 190 in the problem you have done it what is the difference 8.5 megawatt so upper side megawatt lower side megavolt ampere react likewise it show you so this is how the finally on single line diagram we are able to get the losses likewise we have different problems so problem 1 problem 2 like this i have number of problems which i wanted to interact meantime i have bundle of problem yesterday i have shared about uh, 29 of you people have joined my team uh, link and hope you could download them okay if not also register to me that link is given to you so that upcoming material i'll be sharing to meet i mean uh, microsoft team link only so these are the calculations what we do so like this if you please go through those problems i'll be having another uh, time with the problems of uh, that bundle about 8 to 10 or 12 problems there put together in that i have given some uh, uh, comments on that so with that we can look into so like this a gauss seller technique for load flow analysis can be understood so now i require you people to share me one more hour so that not today share me one more hour to make you comfortable for those printed uh, pdf problems which i have shared to you after having gone through them or 
if you like to know how to refer them problem i can interact like this using my pdf view on the screen and you can view them and you can uh, make a note in each problem how i should understand the calculation what is the calculation at each step how it should be proceeded further